Hey, good morning. Uh, Spartan 311 here. Sorry it's been so long. I know it's been uh, forever since I've done a video. So I figured I'd come at you guys with a two-part series. That's right. Two-part series. A mini-series? I don't know. Anyway, what I'm going to be covering is Motorola voice announcement files. Um, part one is going to be how I generate mine. And then part two is going to be um, me showing you how to use the converter to get it from everyday normal people file formats to the Motorola format so we can slap it into the radio via code plug. All right, so first part here, there's a couple ways to go about this. You can use a simple voice recorder and just record whatever you want or you could be like me and use a text-to-speech program. I happen to use Speech2Go. Um, there's free ones out there. This one has a 30-day free trial. I mean, there's all kinds of options out there for you. But here's the kicker. Your audio file must be in WAV format, not MP3, 8,000 hertz, 16-bit mono. Additionally, it's also got to be 56 KB or less in size. That equates to about four seconds of recording time per file. Now, realistically, I would suggest keeping that at three seconds or less, because uh, sometimes I've noticed even with four seconds, even three and a half, 3.75 seconds, uh, the CPS sometimes complains about that. So you're gonna wanna keep that at, I would say just three seconds or less, just to be safe. I mean, you're not, reading War and Peace and putting that as a, a channel announcement. So uh, just keep it short and to the point. Remember, wave format, 8,000 hertz, 16-bit mono, 56 KB or less in size, and keep it at three seconds or, or less, okay? So on the computer, I use uh, Speech2Go. That is a text-to-speech program, and what it does is it takes whatever I type in there and the computer voices it. You know that whole press one for English thing that we absolutely love on the phone? Well, it's basically the same thing. Um, so opening up speech to go I'll give you a little tutorial on the one I use because, you know, that's the one I use. Um, you're presented with basically a text editor. <laughs> Uh, and a bunch of little tabs down here. You can create a tab for each one if you want, or you can just keep reusing the same one. So here I've got Fire Channel A1. You notice the A is in parentheses. That's because the letter A is also a word, right? So it's going to default to the word and not the letter. So by putting it in parentheses, it knows to read it as a letter. You don't have to do that for all of them, uh, but A, A, you do, okay? So if I put the cursor at the front here, it should uh, read out Fire Channel A1 for me. Fire Channel A1. Boom. Okay. So that's that. If you've got some stuff that needs to be spelled a little weird because the computer's not pronouncing it, just get creative with your spelling. For example, we have Mesa Fire C1. Okay. It's pronounced Mesa. But the computer reads it as... Mesa Fire C1. Not so much. We can absolutely do better. So we got to get a little creative. M A Y S A H. Mesa. Okay, let's give that one a shot, see if that works. Mesa Fire C1. Don't be afraid to experiment with your spellings. It's going to look all kinds of silly, but we're not seeing the letters. We're just hearing the results of that. Okay? So just know um, it's not perfect, but we can do better. So that's what we did. Now, before we go saving all of this stuff, it's really important that you get up there, tap the edit button, menu bar, whatever, open up your options. You're going to see this big, huge blue button that says voice settings for recording. We're going to go ahead and open that, and you're going to be presented with some stuff. What we're looking for here is this button that says audio quality. We're going to open that up and click on more settings. Out of your awesome list of options here, make sure 8,000 hertz, 16-bit mono is selected, okay? You hit OK, we're good to go. One of the things I like about speech to go is this, this little remember settings box. So every time I go to save one of these files up here, it will remember the settings I just used. Hit OK, hit OK, we're ready to rock and roll. So, Fire Channel A1, we want to save that. We're gonna hit save up here, and it defaults to MP3. So we're gonna go Fire Channel A1. 
file type needs to be changed to wave. It is very, very important that you select wave. Okay, just hit save on that. It's gonna say it out loud, whatever, boom, done. Let's go on to the next one, hit save. This is our weird one, wrong, Mesa C1. Let's go ahead and hit wave, make sure it's wave. Boom, it's done. The correct pronunciation, pronounce, pronunciation. There's a great video on YouTube about pronouncing things incorrectly. You should check it out. Anyway, we're gonna hit save. Make sure you switch it from MP3 to wave. I can't say it enough. Mesa Fire C1, okay. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, you don't have to open a new tab, generate a new tab for each one of these. Um, you can save your tabs if you want. So like Mesa Fire C1, if I wanted to, I could just backspace. There's Mesa Fire C2. I could read it, save it, whatever. Backspace, Mesa Fire C3. So if you've got a lot that you generate over and over again, maybe you wanna save one of those, but you don't have to. Anyway, that's it um, for part one. Make sure your audio files are three seconds or less. I know it says four, but realistically it should be three. Uh, no larger than 56 kilobits, okay? No, no larger than 56K. Your audio format should be 8,000 hertz and 16-bit mono. It's really important, and it's got to be a WAV file. No MP3, no OGG, no, no silly stuff like that, okay? So that's pretty much it uh, for part one. Part two, I'm going to show you how we're going to convert those to the voice announcements for the CPS, okay? So stay tuned for that video. It's, uh, it's not as hard as you think. It's really simple. The biggest problem is getting your audio files in the correct format. So there you go. Stay tuned for part two. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.